Well, we are making these playgrounds. This is our playground and we decided to build it out of Lego, as you can see. And we made some models that can move, like this and this. I painted the road. I put the stones in the hill. And there's a flying fox. It's very long. The challenge we had was how do we engage the children of Christchurch and Canterbury with the central city. You've got to remember that after the earthquake there was a cordon around the central city for what, over 800 days. Basically the, the messages getting out to the children and their families was don't come in here and we wanted to bring them back in. The idea is to have a huge, wonderful playground that facilitates all sorts of play for different ages, for diverse users, for all types of kids through to, to grandmas like myself. First thing that we knew about it was when the bright yellow box turned up at our school and one of our other teachers said, how about this for, a, for a, a unit or an inquiry unit? And we had a group of girls that have taken that on and are running with it at the moment. So they are in the middle of designing an amazing place for Christchurch. Quite intimidating getting the brick at first but we had a look through it and decided it was something that we could definitely do. It was just super exciting for them. I think it's a fun idea, get children interactive with designing and building Christchurch, because Christchurch needs to be better and stronger. It's really important that children have a voice so that they feel that they're connected to their city, that they have a reason to come back into the city. The children have a, uh, a really great imagination and if you're talking about playgrounds, what better audience can you ask than children? Uh, we should have decided this would be quite a cool idea because uh, we have uh, all the playgrounds that I've been to, we haven't really seen any climbing walls like this before, so we thought it would be a nice new way to, you know, brighten up Christchurch and get it running again. Looking at our city, we talked about playgrounds and what we really liked and thought, well, here's an opportunity to create the best playground in the world. Let's just dream big. What would be really cool things to do? It's called Wonderland. Um, it's quite a simple playground. We have a scooter track here. We haven't finished yet. My favourite part would be the dragon wearing sunglasses. <laughs> they had some pretty hard asks. They were told about the site you know, in terms of the location, you know, the size of the site, the kinds of activities that could be there, but then they were left with their imagination. Hi, my name's Jackson and this is Rocket Land, the model that I have made. Basically what it is here is a slide, a seesaw, and uh, what I call a rocking car, which is you put a penny in and it starts rocking back and forth automatically. And we have a swing set here, a cart track, and you get off the vehicle and have an experience in the rocket. We're in Fano class, so we're so uh, lots of these things are mouldy things like different kinds of swings. I've got a hill and I've got some picnic tables, just in case you want to have a picnic lunch. I'll see you on the duck. <laughs> That's silly. We can't fit on a duck. A goose? <laughs> a goose is a good one. That's big enough. I think it's just brilliant uh, to give children of Christchurch a voice, actually. I just think they've gone through so many upheavals over the last couple of years. And so for the initiative of them to be able to have just dream big um, in such a big piece of property, it's an amazing opportunity for them to create their future here as well. Playgrounds are fun and, <laughs> and people like playgrounds. And there's not that many really cool ones here anymore. I mean, I'm from Christchurch, from Sumner. Um, everything seems to be about doom, gloom and rebuild and it's the holidays at the moment and I just see kids just doing nothing and I really feel for them and they seem to have sort of been missed in this whole rebuild. 
there's all this talk of creating an amazing city. Um, and these guys here are going to be the ones that are going to be living in the city. So, yes, yeah, really important that they have a voice into it. They've been through some really horrible things and um, I feel like the Amazing Place competition has given them an opportunity to see the silver lining, um, to kind of have a, to have a role in, in the what next and the um, reimagination of, of Christchurch and what it could be. We sort of figured that there, wouldn't, there wasn't many playgrounds or equipment that um, disabled could go on, so we constructed it so that they could go on it and have the time of their life. <laughs> well, you climb up the stairs if you don't have special needs, or you climb up the escalator if you don't have special needs, and you land in the foot, and you go through the big squishy tummy, and then you go into the mouth and sit down on your bottom and go down the big squeaky slide and finish into a sandpit. To be able to broaden them past what they know has been a big challenge so that they're thinking about what might be possible rather than just what has already been. They Google Earthed the actual plot of land and we put it up on the interactive whiteboard and they started drawing things onto there so, and then the creating and the planning. They've been writing letters to John Key um, so there's just a wealth of amazing learning experiences that they've been involved in. The children have loved it from day one. They've loved having a project, going home, talking to their parents about it, finding what they could add, bringing resources into the centre to glue on it. They've loved it. Schools had to run an internal competition initially, uh, so they submitted their three best at each year level. Uh, we had over 300 entries, and based on that, we estimate over 6,000 kids took part in the competition. That tunnel, just this, I designed that for the, it's a tunnel slide to your home. Yeah. Um, we've had ideas like the slide going to children's houses and then back to the playground so they could get there faster. We've had children decide that they want to look at the new buildings and see Christchurch rise back up. We have had a great number of submissions, especially in the early childhood, that's the area I'm in at the moment, and uh, some real creative stuff from, from children as young as three, four, five. It just blows you away actually. Um, looking at a lot of cool ideas, some kids have put it down into poster, uh, some in models. Um, definitely a lot of cool ideas, a lot of stuff that can be used for a real playground. Um, Got to say there's some stuff that I hadn't even thought of, so yeah, it's pretty cool. One of the things that's really interesting is that in designing playgrounds is that adults tend to, often they're a monument to self, you know, there's a lot of art, there's a lot of um, stuff that looks nice, which is really important, but there's no play and with all of these designs there's play because that's what the kids want. Well normally we get our brief from adults. The council employees, the council officers are uh, their take on what they think the kids want. This time we're getting it from the kids back up, which is great. Um, one theme I'm seeing is these kids obviously design during summer and they're really missing their pools. QE2's gone, Centennial's gone, uh, water's a huge theme that's coming through. Well there is one playground where a, a man does get burned alive in a lava pool but you know that's <laughs> I guess you make your own choice if you want to get involved in that kind of ride, but yeah, apart from that it's all been pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there is a bit of doom and gloom in some of them. <laughs> yeah. I think if we leave it in the hands of the, the children, we're going to come up with some amazing things. It's just trying to pull out the trends from there and uh, there are some amazingly quirky ideas that just you know, have the essence of something that could be pretty amazing. Everybody wants to win, but <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to win. Yeah, totally. <laughs> We're so good at <laughs> Welcome to the Amazing Place competition. It's amazing! <laughs> welcome, welcome. What an important day this is because you've had a big say in creating one of the exciting projects that we're able to bring you as we rebuild and recreate our city. An amazing place, and that is what today is all about. 
do you know what? The modern playground is so different to the one I used to go on. So we used to have those things that spin around a bit in case you feel a bit giddy when you came off those. And we had the slides and we had the swings. We didn't have anything like rockets and all the things that we're seeing designed here. So your playground is going to be fantastic. So well done for all of you being in the competition. Right, so our first Early Childhood Education Services Prize. We have very highly commended Oxford Play Centre. Awesome guys, and then for year six in first place, we have Harriet Compton, Moen, Zell Logan, Enya O'Malley, and Lucy Jessup from Selwyn House. Well done, guys. Now tell us about your playgrounds. Um, it's a Margaret Mayhew Memorial Playground based on Margaret Mayhew's books. Did you girls enjoy creating it? Yes. So it was just the three of you? Wow. Lucy Jessup, but she's moved to England. Ah. Oh. <laughs> now, thank you so much, girls, but that is not all. The judges were so impressed by your entry, they decided it deserved a special award. And I'd like to ask Margaret Mahi's daughter, Penny Mahi, to join us on stage and present a special prize to each of the girls. So I've got a very special announcement to make now, and that is I'm delighted to announce that the playground that has been designed is going to be named after Margaret Mahi, and just as Margaret Mahi's books captured the imagination of generations of New Zealanders, this playground will be a place for people of all ages to enjoy. The, the main winners were brought into a workshop and their ideas were put on the table and then actually put in a comparison against what our lead designers had actually put together. And there was a collaborative discussion between their ideas and how they would actually be implemented on the site. We basically asked them to talk about their ideas, their winning entries, but we found it like a, a sort of educational process for them to explain the sort of design work and the approach that we now have to do to make their playground come to life and become an actual project on the ground. So why did you put it in that location? Um, it's shady, shady, but you can go on Okay, so it's in both the shade and the sun. Yeah, and then that's very good thing. So actually, that's a good point. Maybe the cafe. It could be. It could be. They've got their ideas, but they've been working out what scale it needs to fit on the site and where it goes. So I think that was a really good exercise for them to really, their imagination to actually start to take form on, on the ground. In the meantime, we still have 30 metre high castles and, um, and, and the likes, which, are, which will be a, a challenge to, to interpret and implement. But yeah, we certainly take advantage of uh, the degree of naivety, if you like. No idea is a bad idea. Uh, and yeah, often very good places to start. It just came to me and I just went, we should do a Margaret Mayhew playground. And from there we kind of just built on that. We each found one book that we really liked and we designed one piece of playground equipment ourselves. This is the castle based on Madigan's Fantasia. This is the Elsie Lock Memorial Family Picnic Area. This is the Dragon's Tongue Slide. The sense of magic and imagination that she brought to life in those stories, and they've really grasped hold of that as the opportunity to create this fantastic play experience. So I think that's what's driving our design as well, is to create this fantastic setting to let the children's imagination really run riot and have such a diverse, a diverse arrangement of different play elements and stories that they can come to enjoy. My idea was the tree lookout, which is would be around this area. It's like basically a giant tree that's hollowed out in the middle. And it has like a big like aluminium slide that goes down, but we've put it in the shade so it doesn't get really hot. We've got the witch hat slide, 
which was based on the witch and the cherry tree. And it's a massive big witch hat, complete with a pink bow. The swings are broomsticks, because in the story, the witch has a broomstick and she flies away on it once she has her muffin. And so what have you learned today? I think we learned that actually it's a way bigger space than we thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Those children who were involved in the very beginning, if they can participate to the end and can see which of their ideas survive and which not and why, then they will make this place their place and they will care for it and, and play there and they will tell everybody, look, I was involved here. It's the same system, it has that connectivity I see. and through from the water play. I haven't come across a briefing that was so well prepared so far in my uh, professional career, I must say. And our team here are five professionals coming from uh, four different companies all bringing their background so this is a a superb combination really so we're expecting to see back from them some quite subtle but meaningful design responses in the play equipment that reference some of margaret mayhe's stories um, elsie lock and her stories and the iwi traditional games in particular of the precinct in the Avon River precinct, it is really the centre of the precinct and it really is about connecting all the spaces around it. It's about providing the existing community with a wonderful space, our new residential community that we're promoting with this great space, as well as the broader parts of Christchurch and Canterbury. The project team are working really hard to deliver this playground by December this year. So it's ready for the summer holidays and can be a key part of bringing people back into the city centre. Christchurch is going to be an amazing place! Yeah!